Recently, I did something I never thought I would do. I wore my Quest 3 to Walmart. Doing something like this in the most public place I could think of definitely made me nervous, and I almost got cold feet and shut down the whole thing. I really wanted to see if it was possible to use the pass-through quality of Quest 3 to do everyday stuff like grocery shopping, and of course, if people would freak out when they see a girl walk into Walmart with a headset on her head, yet still able to navigate perfectly. The plan was simple. I made a shopping list, which I put in a Google Drive that I could access in my Quest 3 browser. And all that was left for me to do is put on the headset and walk in. If all goes well, I will keep doing these social Quest experiments in my future videos, testing the boundaries of Quest 3 possibilities as well as people's tolerance to VR tech being used in public spaces. All right, so I can see everything. It's pretty cool. Now, the crazy part here is going to be that people will see me wearing this thing on my head. Huh? I did my groceries as I normally would, find what I need, put them in bags and in the shopping cart. It took me a little while to get adjusted to the lower quality of vision in pass-through compared to how I would see things with my own eyes. While I find the pass-through quality of Quest 3 quite impressive, it was still very hard to see items at distance. The in-headset recording actually appears to be quite a bit more clear and higher quality than actual things you see in VR. It's just that you can see very far away. The farther I get, the slow, but it's still grainy. So like right Right now I'm looking for peppers and it's hard for me to find them. Like, I don't really know where peppers are. <laughs> Essentially, shopping in Quest 3 pass through felt like I had a slight visual impairment. Oh wow, I didn't see the water in there. I needed to look closer at certain items to make sure that this was what I needed to get, and I couldn't see small items too far away. What saved me some time here is because I've shopped in this store before, I pretty much knew where most of the groceries were, with the exception of corn. That one was really difficult to find. Aisle A1. This is aisle A1. Okay, that makes sense here. Yeah, it says A1. The entire thing is probably aisle A1. But well, that's not very helpful then. Hey, just... there's corn. What? Where? <laughs> what? Look at that. Okay, fine. So we got it. Yeah. Let's get two of these. Are you taking two because you're afraid if you leave, you'll never find it again? Should I take like 10? <laughs> no, that's fine. The next thing we need is sausages. Aisle A30. Nice. So far, I'm feeling pretty normal. Still, I was a fully functional shopper, perfectly capable of maneuvering between other people and finding everything I needed on my list. I've realized that I was so preoccupied with shopping that sometimes I even forgot that I had a headset on. It is certainly something that I've gotten used to after about 30 minutes of walking in Walmart. This looks pretty good. Three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe I should buy two because this is all we're gonna eat tonight. Okay, I'm pretty sure that, that that's our, our groceries. Speaking of shopping, I want to share with you my latest shopping obsession, Tamu, which is quickly becoming my go-to shopping destination. You won't believe the variety and the savings. Check out these cool RGB LED hexagon lights, perfect for jazzing up my recording studio. And with winter around the corner, I grabbed these amazing heating gloves because my hands are constantly cold. And for my little one, I found the cutest super soft bamboo viscose onesie, which both me and my baby absolutely love. There's some other cool stuff I got, like these stylish sunglasses, which cost me less than $3, and one terabyte external SSD hard drive because I needed one to back up my old YouTube videos, and I couldn't resist getting this really cozy and soft pajama set. And the best part? I got this at just a fraction of the cost compared to other online shopping services. Plus, you get to enjoy free shipping and free returns for up to 90 days. And here's a special deal for you. Just for Discover viewers, download Timu app using my link or code in the description and get a hundred dollars in coupons for free. But that's not all. Shopping with Temu means you're supporting a great cause. Temu has partnered with Trees for the Future to plant trees across sub-Saharan Africa. These efforts are transforming lands, communities, and addressing global environmental issues. And you can be a part of this too. You can plant a tree with Temu for just 25 cents. So shopping with Temu means not only that you'll be getting great deals, but you'll be helping save the environment. Click the link below, download the app, and start your Temu journey today. Thank you, Temu, for sponsoring this video. It's an interesting observation I have. First, some people, when they get close to me, they try to pretend like everything's okay, everything's well, normal. Well, that's what you do with like, crazy people. Oh, uh, you know, just every day. It's yeah. just uh, nothing, not, yeah. nothing is wrong about the fact that uh, this crazy person is having a, uh, something that covers half of her face. And then other people just 
staring without remorse. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. What surprised me is how few reactions I've actually noticed from people who saw me walking around with a headset on. Granted, Walmart is known for many weirdos who come to do their shopping here, but still, it is not every day that you see a person shopping around in a VR headset. Many people pretended that they were not paying attention and they were polite enough not to stare, just think that it was not a big deal, but definitely not all of them. Some found this to be utterly fascinating. One thing that came to mind is that this was recorded only a couple weeks before Halloween. It is possible that some people thought that I was wearing a costume. Okay, yeah. I look pretty crazy. Oh, they're cool. It's almost $3 too. It's $3? You know, you can have breakfast at McDonald's for $3. <laughs> oh, that would be a waste. This is forever because it's plastic. It's literally forever. Yeah. Overall, I felt pretty comfortable walking around with the headset on and staring at the world through the pass-through with the exception of this toys section. Somehow, it made the pass-through act in the weirdest way. It started warping like crazy, flickering, and overall, the distortions got so frequent and so bad that it made me dizzy. This was the first time that I felt like I wanted to remove the headset and continue without it. I assumed that it had something to do with the bright colors surrounding me, and I'm not really sure why, but somehow it freaked out my Quest 3's pass-through. As soon as all the variety of colors was gone, the pass-through quality went back to normal. It was certainly not something I would expect to see, but I found it to be an interesting finding. What did you do? Oh my god, how do I make it stop? Here you go. Okay. End up getting this. Yeah, I can play with that. <laughs> okay, I think uh, that's all for us. I thought that the whole experience was a successful one. I found everything I needed, I picked up something extra, and I wore the Quest 3 the whole time, and I even used the on-screen windows from the browser to help me find the right items. Of course, right now the practical use does not justify the difficulty that it takes to set everything up and the visual degrading from your natural view. Alright, let's go. Alright, so overall this was interesting. Again, not truly really justified. <laughs> There's literally no reason why you would have to do that, but it's still a cool use case because you can test out how that would feel and it's only possible to do. I really like that you could uh, pull up the website and check out the aisle that you need but for now you can just do it on your phone, right? You, you don't have to have it in a bulky headset like this. because it's still, it's still pretty bulky for what it is. Um, when the form factor becomes much better and if this headset is becoming more compact, kind of like the glasses or a visor, then yes and it's not going to draw, uh, draw all this attention. And maybe mix with some AR oh, yeah. in the oh, store? Well, yeah, it would be cool if it was integrated, like if there were like things that you can tap and find the items easier just right there on the aisle. But oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> For now, it's just a really cool quest experiment. And uh, I think it went well because I found everything I needed. And uh, you know, that, that's really what I came here for. It took a little bit of time adjusting because my vision isn't as good in this uh, in class 3 than it is uh, without. But that's just the technology constraints. I'm gonna have to think about what I can do next for, for the next quiz pyramid, but this was pretty fun overall. I got used to the weird stairs at the end and um, I still felt pretty ridiculous. People tried to be somewhat polite, at least some of them, and others were just staring me down the entire time, which is pretty fun too. And this is definitely something I would like to try again, just because putting myself in these weird situations is, is, is very unusual, it's you know, in some way liberating too. It's also a good idea to let people start getting used to this future technology we're going to be living in. Yeah, it's going to wait for all of us. All right, I think we're done here. If you're interested to see what mixed reality applications are available on Quest 3 right now, check out these two videos about the best MR games and apps that you can get on Quest 3. There's way more of them than you think. See you next time!